I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit of a scavenger of scrap wood pieces. I just can't seem to bear to throw anything away. So recently I was going through our scrap wood pile. I found a bunch of thin strips of wood and they uh, reminded me of a project that I've been wanting to build and that's this laminated head mallet. It was a project quite a while ago in Shop Notes magazine and I've really liked it. So this makes a perfect opportunity to get started. So I'm gonna start by gluing up the laminations on the head but it's only the first nine layers. So I'm gonna start there. So I'm gonna start with this first layer. I'm using a combination of European beach, which is this first layer. That's gonna be my outside layer. So I'm gonna get a, a thin layer of glue here. I don't want too much squeeze out. For these nine layers, there's gonna be eight glue joints. So if I put too much glue, there's gonna be quite a mess here. So just get a nice coating. Um, my alternate layer is this wingay. It's a nice hard exotic wood. It's gonna give a nice dark contrast to that European beach. I am using tight bond three glue, so it adds a little bit more open time We're gonna do a layer of chocolate and then marshmallow. Now your graham cracker. Get good even coverage. We'll put our last layer of beach on. So now if you ever tried to glue up multiple layers with different glue joints, you know that it's gonna slide around once you add that clamping pressure. So to help out a little bit, I have got a couple of pieces of half inch MDF. I've added some paraffin wax here to the, to the surfaces so it's not gonna stick. But I'm gonna use that to kinda put on the sides here, keep everything from kinda shifting around, keep it in order as I get clamps on here. So hopefully this works. So put a clamp there, clamp on this end. And hopefully those layers of MDF kinda keep the glue squeeze out to a minimum on the sides is gonna help with the cleanup later. We get plenty of clamps on here. We'll let this dry overnight and we'll come back and we'll start on the joinery. Now that the glue is dry on my blank and I've cleaned it all up, it's looking really good. The next step is to cut the mortise for the handle. And you see here, I didn't glue up all of the layers yet. And that's because I didn't want to glue up all the layers and chop out that mortise with a chisel. So I'm going to do that here at the table saw. And I'm going to cut a dado, which will form three sides of the mortise. And then as I glue up the rest of the layers, that will complete the final side. So let's go ahead and get started. Now that I have the dado cut, I can glue the next two layers on. I pre-glued these two layers together, so I'm gonna only contend with one glue joint this time. So I'm gonna add the glue. The other thing is you wanna be mindful that you don't want a lot of squeeze out into that mortise. You're gonna be able to clean it up a little bit, but if you can prevent it, that would be great. Kind of feather the little bit of glue towards that joint. Get this on here. You can see it's a little bit oversized. I'm going to trim that up after the glue's dried. I have another little cheat here. I'm going to use a pin nailer since I'm going to add more layers to this. You're not going to see the pins. So just add those here in the middle. That'll keep it from sliding around as I get the clamps on. I wanna get good even pressure all around the edges so this thin layer doesn't cup up. All right, looks like I need a few more clamps, but we'll get those clamps on here, get this dried, and we'll move on. 
I'm finally ready to glue on the last two layers for the head blank. But before I do that, I wanna add a little bit of mass to this head. And in the plans, it calls for half inch metal rod. But I dug through my coffee can of hardware and I found some bolts, cut off the heads and that'll do just fine. So I'm gonna drop all those in. Make sure they're flush or below the surface. And then I'm ready to glue on those last two layers. After the glue was dry on my blank, I took it to the bandsaw and cut it to final shape. After a little sanding and easing over the edges, my head's complete and it's looking pretty good. Now I can get to work on the handle. I'm starting with an oversized blank and I've taken it over to the table saw and made several passes on each edge to form a tenon that fits nicely into the head. Like that. You can also see that I went to the bandsaw and cut some kerfs. That's for wedges that I'll use to secure the handle onto the head later. Now you can see I need to do a little shaping on this handle. I'm going to do that over at the router table. You can see this handle is profiled on all four sides. So I could go over to the bandsaw, put a template or draw the shape on all four sides of this, but as I cut out one side, it's gonna cut away any layout lines I had on the other side. And I could take that cut off piece and tape it back on and try to cut off, but it's just gonna be a lot of hassle. And I think I'm gonna make a lot more of these handles, so I went to the trouble of making these box templates where I printed out a full-size profile of the face of the handle, and I glued it on here, cut my shape, and then I can fit the handle inside of this box. Maybe, fit this inside of the box. And then I'll use this to flush trim each side. And then I can pop it out. Once that's done, pop it out, flip it around and do the other side. The edge of the handle has a little bit different profile and it's gonna be a little bit different width. So I had to make a separate box for that. So I'm gonna end up with two boxes for my four sides. On this first profile, I'll fit it into the box. But you can see I'm gonna have quite a bit to cut off there. So I am gonna to go to the bandsaw and cut those first edges just to relieve a little bit of pressure off the bit. And then I'm gonna get started here on the router. After securing the handle into the first template box, I'll use the flush trim bit to follow the template to create the profile. Then I'll take the handle out, flip it around and do the other side. To do the other two faces, I'll change boxes and use the template box in the same manner with the bearing following along the profiled edge. With the handle shaped on all four sides, now I'm ready to ease these edges with a half inch round over. And I can't just set the bit flush with the table and run the piece along it like I would normally because of the contoured shape. So now I've made this little bridge as it's called. And it's just a half inch piece of scrap wood it's got a bevel on both sides and then a flat on the top. And on that flat, the contoured shape of the handle can follow along and shape that edge. The bit is set just a little bit below this flat and the bearing can ride along the other face. With the handle contoured and cut to length, I'm ready to start the assembly. So I'm just going to put a little glue in the head here. Get it brushed in there. I'm ready to put the handle in. Nice fit. Now I'm gonna 
Secure the handle with the wedge, make sure it doesn't come off or the glue comes loose later. Made these little wingay wedges at the bandsaw and sanded them so they were thin and smooth. Tap those in place. Get the other one started. That's pretty good. I'm gonna let the glue dry on those, and I'm gonna come back and cut the handle flush, and then I can finish it up. All right, the mallet is just about done. I just wanna add a little tongue oil finish on this for some protection and part a little color, and then we're there. All right, that's looking pretty good. I really like the way that the, the wing gay and the birch really complement each other. I think I'm gonna have a really useful tool here. So I recommend going through your scrap bin and seeing what you can build. Woodsmithplans.com, hundreds of professional, high quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy to download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full color photos, illustrations and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, plus we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.